this morning from um, Teresa's word about not being fearful, not allowing fear to take hold, and to the songs that we've been singing about Jesus Christ, our living hope. Have you got the um, PowerPoint, James? Is it the living faith Yeah, that's the one. Here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we go. So today I'm going to be speaking about hope, the anchor of the soul. I think that probably James has gone, so maybe I'll get the clicky thing. <laughs> James! <laughs> I can have a clicky thing, yes. spirituality we've been calling it. So people have been sharing whatever they had on their heart, everything that's necessary for us in our life of faith. So today I'm going to talk about um, hope. And I just want, this is what Tony read right at the beginning of our series from 2 Peter 1. His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. By these he has given us very great and precious promises, so that through them you may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world because of evil desire. So his divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness. He's given us everything that we need. We already have it through the death and resurrection of Jesus. So when we look around the world, I'm sure you're like a little bit like me. It's such so full of bad news, isn't it? We see conflict, we see corruption, we see war. We look to Africa and we see droughts and famine. We see climate change, we see floods and all extreme weather conditions. And when you're on social media, maybe you're sort of what they call doom scrolling. You're just going through all these bits of news that are just depressing and just difficult. But we shouldn't be surprised at this because Jesus explained to his disciples that we can expect things to be like this before he comes again. So they were asking him about the second coming, they were, when he would come again. They were asking him about the end of time. And he said to them, um, you're going to hear of wars and rumours of wars See that you are not alarmed, because these things must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will raise up, rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these events are the beginning of labor, labor pains. So we know that Jesus is coming again. We don't know the time of his coming again. But we know that we are in a season that's leading up to when he comes again. So my question this morning is, what are we hoping for? What do we have confidence in? So where is our hope, basically? So when we talk about hope in the English language, we quite often mean something really wishy-washy, don't we? I hope you feel better soon. I hope it doesn't rain today. I hope, um, I hope you can come and see me. So it's quite a wishy-washy wishy verb, if you like. But in the New Testament, in the Greek, although hope does sometimes mean desire or wish, um, it says that the most important sense of the verb is the firm conviction that because of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, we can have confidence as we face the future. And when it's talking about hope as a thing that we have our confidence in, um, it means confident expectation or solid assurance. So 
So this is, a, I'm going now to this well-known um, song about the anchor from Hebrews chapter 6. We have this hope, so we've been singing about hope, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters in the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. It's quite a complex verse, that one, or two verses. But um, the bit that I want to concentrate on today is we hope is an anchor. It's an anchor in the storms. It's an anchor in whatever happens to us. It's an anchor that stops a boat from drifting. It stops, um, it stops us being blown around in, in the storms of life. And also we see that our hope is in Jesus. When it talks about um, he's entered the sanctuary, it means he's entered into the presence of God on our behalf. He, has, he takes his own sacrifice and he is there on our behalf. So our hope is in him. Our hope is in what he has done. It's a stabilizing force in our life and he did it on our behalf. So hope isn't just for Israel. When we see it in the Old Testament, it's prophesied that it will be, Jesus will be, that in his name, the nations will put their hope. So it's for all of us as well. In his name, that is everything about him, the whole of the person, his identity and his mission. Our hope is in him. Okay, so um, I'm going to just have this little bit from Ephesians. Thank you, James. <laughs> um, I, love, I love Ephesians. I love Ephesians 1. Um, Paul was writing this from prison. So he was writing to the Ephesian church, but also possibly he was writing to other churches. It was like a circular letter that would have been sent to other churches. And he was, if you remember, he was in prison, but he's talking about hope. He's talking about all the blessings of being called by God all the blessings that we have in God because we are His. So I'll just read this. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches, his, uh, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Yes. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. So hope always looks to the future, but the hope that we're speaking of is also rooted in the past. And because of what he did in the past, we can have hope for the present and hope for the future. It's revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. So he asks that the Holy Spirit would enlighten people. So it's revealed to us by his presence, by the Spirit, because of where Jesus is at this present time. He is in the presence of God. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is God. He is there in the heavenly places and everything is under his feet. So our confidence is in his sacrifice and the incomparably great power which raised Christ from the dead. And there is no greater power than the power that raised Christ from the dead. So we can have confidence in our salvation because of what he has done 
confirmed to us by the Spirit, looking forward to the future when we will be with him. And Paul um, speaks a lot about this groaning, this groaning inside. He says that even creation is groaning for the re revelation of the children of God. Yeah. And also that we, we are groaning as well. We ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. I'm sure many of us are groaning for the redemption of our bodies when we experience so many things in this life, so many difficulties with our bodies. With our, 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 our bodies are groaning for the, when, we are, when we meet him face to face when we get our new bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Yeah, we do, yeah. Can you um, move on, James? So Paul is talking about our present troubles. So in that time, obviously their troubles was, were great persecution, great difficulty, suffering. Paul suffered a lot, he was beaten, he was left for dead. But he'll still he could write in Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, Tony was speaking about perseverance a few weeks ago, and so it's connected, really. We don't like to think about our present suffering causing us to grow in character, but that's what the Bible says, that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And in, Hebrew, in Hebrews, the writer to the Hebrews says in chapter 11, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So there is a connection all the way through with faith and hope. We have this hope that is sure, and we receive it in faith. Excuse me. ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbours for their good, to build them up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it, as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures, and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. And this is pretty much what Teresa was saying when she brought that word about fear this morning, about depending on the scripture, that everything that was written in the past was brought to teach us. Is that something I'm doing? No. No. <laughs> everything was, brought, was written to teach us so that through endurance, we might have hope. So the scripture is the place where we find hope. The scripture, in reading the encouragement of the scripture, we find our hope. We're reminded of our hope. We're reminded of the truth that is much greater than any fear that we have. Yeah. And also he tells us not to rely on the things around us for our hope. You can move it on, um, James. And in 1 Timothy, Paul says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, not to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, 
but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. So there's nothing that we can put our, help, our hope in in this present world. Money, money can come and money can go. Yeah. Houses, jobs, yeah. anything in our life can come and it can go. We don't put our hope in them. We put our hope in Jesus, in the person of Jesus and what he's done. But we can't be indifferent to those who are feeling hopeless, those who are surrounding us, who are in need. And Estelle and I went to um, prayer and fasting this week and we listened to Natalie Williams, who is the CEO of Jubilee Plus, which particularly works with churches, works at all levels, works with government to see, um, to stand up for social justice, social equality, and is very, has a very loud voice in the country and also helps other churches. And she was saying, it's right that we help people. You know, the food banks are busier than ever. People are going, people who never used food banks before are going to food banks. People are desperate. People are hopeless, if you like. They just don't know what to do. They don't know how to feed their children. And it's right that we give them hope, that we help them. But she said, it's right that we help people and do what we can, but they don't just need hope in their present crisis. They need hope for eternal life. So yes, we need to help to meet the needs of those who are hopeless and helpless, but above all, they need that hope of eternal life. And in 1 Peter, we read um, in the Epistle of Peter, In your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. So we should always be ready, not to argue, not to try and convince people, but to, have to share the hope that we have, the hope of eternal life, the hope of Jesus. We should be ready to tell people about that hope that they too can find, the hope of eternal life. So just sort of wrapping up, I want to remind us again, our hope isn't weak, it's not wishy-washy, as we can so often say. Our hope is fixed on Jesus and yeah. what he has done yeah. and where he is seated and he will come again. Will. So Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And we must be prepared to give the reason for the hope that is within us. He's still here. He is still here. Yes, He's thank still you. Here. And we're gonna, I just want to read a couple of verses from a song that we sing a lot. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. So Lord God, as, we fin as I finish this morning, I just pray that you will take my words and use them to remind people of the hope that we have in you, that hope that is secure, yeah. the hope that is the anchor of our soul, of our faith, that will keep us from drifting, that will keep us safe and secure in all the storms of life. I pray for those who feel like darkness is hiding your face at the moment that they will know that they rest on your unchanging grace, that in every stormy gale, the anchor holds within the veil. Lord God, I pray that you will bless each one here today, that they would know that hope alive within them. They will be ready to speak of that hope to anyone that they meet, and they will know that they are secure, they are rooted in him. Amen.